The genesis of EFI is a rather interesting one. It's a coincidence of a building being available and then a vision within the College of Arts and Humanities and Social Science about what universities should be for. So there was a sense that we needed to build something within the university that would help humanity navigate complex futures. Why does it have the future in the title? It has the future in the title because we recognise there are enormous challenges that the planet is facing and that these challenges are things that universities traditionally are not actually structurally engineered necessarily to answer because we know that they have to have a multidisciplinary, radical multidisciplinary approach to answering them. The thing that makes us distinctive, I think, from the way in which universities usually function is this radical multidisciplinarity, which is bringing together disciplines from right across the university, things that never have actually worked together before. I am involved in a field called Digital Humanities, which is about the use of computational techniques in the arts, humanities and cultural heritage more broadly formed to try and move forward our understanding of our research areas in ways that you couldn't do without computers. I think the voice of the arts and humanities is often thought to be not present or not useful in the digitisation of society. So as we move to a society that has more and more digital elements to it, both personal and civic and commercial, the voice of the arts and humanities in critiquing that and understanding the power structures and understanding the ways in which that affects people, people's lives, is often negated because it's not profit making. But I think it's really important that we interrogate these things using the skill sets which come from the arts, humanities and social sciences to be able to build a society which is good for all. And the whole point of the humanities is to study the past, to understand the present. What we're seeing, especially in the tech industry, are people who have not thought that the arts, humanities and the social sciences in particular are useful to tech and now we have products and services which are having huge negative effects on society. We need to marry these things again. So there's, there's always room for specialism within universities and expertise comes from specialism. But the danger with that, if you have a lot of specialist areas, it can become very siloed. And what we're hoping to build with the Futures Institute is a space where we we can be interdisciplinary or people can meet each other, people can engage with each other in different ways and provide uh, underpinning infrastructure that will reward that, that will allow people to get resources to behave in that way and will be able to be the intersection between academics, the public and industry. And this building has um, a wonderful history but had been completely neglected and needed to be remade. The history of the building is integral to everything. It's imprinted on that building. And so this sense that this was a place of healing. It's a very visible space. It's a listed building in the heart of Edinburgh. We've rescued that. It was in a horrific condition. So that's part of it. But there's also the fact that doing something very brave and setting out our stall to say, this is the place, this is the crucible where you would be very datafied space. Um, but at the same time, it's going to be this, this place, it's a meeting point and a very public facing meeting point that's open that people could come into. And I think the physical nature of the Futures Institute is part of that. This isn't a virtual institute, this is a, an institute that will have a major physical footprint within the city. And it will be a new fringe venue or a new Edinburgh Festival venue, I don't know. We'll be involved with the festivals. But the point is that it's going to be a physical point of contact for that hubbub to be around. But the fact that such a large investment's been made into a physical institute is really fascinating. Many data science institutes are more virtual and are built on existing physical infrastructure. But the fact that the physical is so invested in the Future Institute and the at the heart of it is this conversion of the old hospital and the rescuing of the old hospital, but then building upon that a data-led building or data-led infrastructure within the building, which can allow us to do things that we couldn't do. This is uh, just a, a, a wonderful thing that we have, this building. The building itself was set up to be uh, a hospital that was to prevent contagion, to prevent infection. And what we're doing is disrupting that entirely and creating an interior which will encourage contagion and encourage infection between disciplines. 
We will have some industry partners, external partners coming to work with us for a while in that building. We'll have students coming through that building. We'll have the wider public coming through that building. Exhibition space, um, major performance space within the building. We're going to have a cafe. We're going to have social space for students. And it's going to be a building for the community. I hope to have community gardens in front of it. So it's actually, it's a real privilege and, and, and an extraordinary moment in anyone's career but everybody who's working in EFI now, we're shaping this building for the next two or three hundred years. So it's a real opportunity to imprint ourselves and really think about what is a university for? What does a civic university look like inside? How does it physically appear? How does it welcome the community in? Not only will it be welcoming the community and it will also have amazing lab space for all sorts of exciting research and education to take place. So we're going to have maker spaces and we'll have data visualisation labs and we're going to have high-tech equipment so that we can teach people on campus and when they're remote um, at the same time. So the thing that's really interesting about the building when you walk around it is that it is enormous and yet it's not enormous. So you ha we have these wards which are an extraordinarily tall, light space, and yet actually, when you think about what you might put in them, they're actually, they feel quite cosy and homely and small. So there's this real sort of paradox within that building that is an interesting challenge for us, actually. So although it looks like a massive, massive space, sometimes those spaces don't feel as big as they might look from the outside. Um, the challenge is to create flow through the building, to make sure that we have enough flow horizontally, vertically. We're at the start of this journey. We're really at the start of this journey of a five-year programme of seeing how we can bring this community on board with the whole, this whole city deal, giving a voice to a different sense of community to get involved in data science as we move forward the programme of the city deal throughout the next 10 years. There has been an imperative towards driving stuff which is just profit making or it can just monetize things in a different way. But that leaves out a huge section of human life, especially when we come to cultural heritage. The benefits of cultural heritage are not monetary in a lot of cases. There is a big industry around cultural heritage, but the benefits to individuals can be more intangible. And they are well known about mental health and well-being, but they've been ignored just now because of the drive towards making money out of apps or the way that you monetize search and things like this. So we have to provide a mechanism that we can explore that and see how technology can be developed in those areas where there isn't that financial imperative at the start. I think one of the reasons why the Futures Institute is important to be in a university setting is it's very different than in a commercial setting. And we should be allowed that space to explore. We should be allowed to test. We should be allowed to fail. In research, a negative result is still a result. So we should be the people that are at that bleeding edge where we can be messing around with technology, for want of a better word, where we're actually trying it out and we're seeing the impact on society. I think as well that there's an issue with the fact that most tech is a black box. And maybe some of this, the stuff that the Futures Institute is trying to do is to highlight that and question it and poke a stick at it especially with the work in digital sociology and the work about power structures and the work about algorithms and ethics. These are all important to make our community more digitally literate, but also to encourage people to question that digitization of society, which has been rapid over the past 10 years. And it has really changed a lot of our day-to-day -day interactions with each other, as well as with institutions, as well as with commercial entities. And the place of the Futures Institute to start any of those questions or to start that conversation or to keep that conversation going. But I think the place of the Futures Institute is to keep this critical angle on the table and to make sure that we are looking at it in a 360 degree way rather than just thinking about commercialism or thinking about money making or thinking about products and services. It is about thinking of the effects that tech is having on us, with us, for us, and looking at all these aspects and keeping that conversation going and highlighting how important it is. And that goes back to the 19th century principle of the democratic intellect.
the view of widening up education and the university to anyone who could benefit from it and making sure that we widen participation meaningfully and people can come and study with us but also do other come in in other kinds of ways. It's also about how we conduct ourselves as an institute internally, about how we conduct ourselves as academics and the kind of community that we want to build, the citizenship we want to build within EFI as a democratic process. So it's about our conduct as well and the values that we hold. And then it's also about the impact of what we do, this expectation that I have very strongly that the university should be doing things on benefit to the wider world.